Good morning. Welcome to our worship. Sunday, March the 7th, third Sunday in Lent. Let us light the Christ candle. We light the memorial candles today. We remember and pray for everyone who is challenged physically, spiritually, and financially. May God's peace be with you. Remember, with God's help, we will get through this together. Please join with me in the call to worship. Jesus, cleanser of the temples and souls, at this midpoint in the Lenten journey, look deep within our hearts and our lives and clear away all that holds us back. May our minds, spirits, and bodies be a temple that is open to your presence. And may our words and our actions be transparent to your love and truth. Our opening hymn is from Voice United hymn number 111, As the Sun with Longer Journey. Opening prayer, we pray for this church community, Knox United Church, will be purified in its life and mission so that all that we do in and from here may reveal your gospel to others. May the temple within us be a refuge where doves of peace roost in the rafters. May it be a garden that bears the fruits of a generous spirit. Amen. Now I'd like to invite everyone to join with me in the prayer, the Lord's Prayer. You may speak the prayer in the language of your choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Assurance of God's grace. Friends of Jesus, we are made clean. By the words Jesus has spoken to us, there is room in our lives and in our community for the Holy One to dwell. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord 
Children's hymn today is from Voice United hymn number 112, O God, How We Have Wandered, followed by The Moment of Discovery with Jane. Happy Sunday, happy first Sunday in March. We're glad that you've joined us. Alrighty, I have something to share and show with you today. Um, a manual. This is kind of small, but it's very wordy. Quite a few pages. <laughs> and this is a second part. This one has the pictures that I can kind of open and explore and use. Um, this latest manual that I have is one uh, for the Google Nest. We have this new system in our home um, that connects our fire alarm and our carbon monoxide monitor uh, to our smartphones. So pretty cool, uh, great feature to have, but um, it's new technology <laughs> and one that uh, has some rules uh, for how to operate it properly, not to break it. Um, I'm thankful for the pictures, they, they sure help. <laughs> oh, I've actually got quite a few manuals if you think about it. Uh, manual for like the dishwasher, the microwave, the vacuum cleaner, the refrigerator, a lot of appliance manuals, right? Um, and you know, when you buy a new phone, a new television, there's a manual to kind of help us understand it. Well, how many of you live in an apartment or a condo? Well, if you live in a certain condo or apartment, you probably have certain rules that go with it. And instead of a big manual that's given to you per se, you have a landlord, right? You have somebody who manages or owns the building who has set some specific rules. For example, paying rent on time, paying the mortgage on time, um, making sure certain common areas are clean, like lobby areas, hallways, you know, are left in certain specific states. Um, and if you choose to move out, there's certain things you can't take with you, like the toilet. I heard a story once that somebody actually wanted to take the toilet with them. Interesting. <laughs> and of course, there's the pet one too. Usually no big pets are allowed in small apartment buildings. Makes sense. Guess I can't go back to an apartment anytime soon. Not with all my animals. <laughs> but you have some rules and how-to things in order to live in that home and to live in harmony with other people as well. Well, in sort of thinking about that, it's really kind of an interesting thing now to think about, you know, God living in us. And we are a home. 
we are a temple for the Holy Spirit. I mean, we know God is in heaven and he has his son, Jesus, but they've given us the Holy Spirit. And when we want the Holy Spirit to be living in us, we're asking him to be in us and we're creating a home for the Holy Spirit. So what rules would you think the Holy Spirit would have, right? If the Holy Spirit was writing rules for living in us because ultimately we're asking the Holy Spirit to be, you know, in charge and to take our lives as God wants. Um, and to do that, here's a clue. It, he's given us the manual and he's given us what it is we are to do in the Bible. And from Luke chapter 10, verse 27, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I think those are the rules the Holy Spirit has for us. So if we genuinely are believing that and believing that the Holy Spirit, um, you know, we want to live by what God wants for us, then we need to take into account what does that mean to, you know, love God with all our heart and our soul and our mind? Well, to me, if I was reading the manual, under mind, I probably would think, I'm sure it's going to say surrounding yourselves with good friends and good people who encourage you and putting good things in your mind, you know, and God understanding God's word. How about your body, right? Loving yourself. You know, how are you treating and loving yourself and your body? You know, oh, those chips and things are good, but not every day, right? We've got to make some better decisions of healthy foods for ourselves and getting good sleep, making sure we're taking care of ourselves and your heart, right? Asking for forgiveness of our sins, being humble and grateful and gentle and thankful. Um, those are good things for our heart to make our heart feel good. But the biggest one too, about loving others as ourselves. Well, Thinking first about God, then others, you know, truly understanding how love is patient and love is kind, trying to live peacefully with others, but forgiveness, that's another big one, forgiving others just as you want forgiveness yourself. Well, you know what, as we're just sort of discovering today that the Holy Spirit can live in each and every one of us and create a home, well... When we have Jesus as our savior, our lives are his home. And since God has made each of us unique, you know what? All of our homes, our bodies, who we are, look different. And his home for you will look like you. Ephesians 2, 21, 22. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Oh, so cool, huh? So let's take from this, okay, Knox? Let's take that this means that we are stronger together than we would ever be on our own. That this is what this would be when we call the church, that this is what we would call Knox, not a building or a place just to go to on a Sunday morning or to tune in virtually. No, but that we are a group of believers who honor God together. Let's each welcome the Holy Spirit with our hearts and our homes and together let's stick together to be the church. Go in peace, everyone. Go in love. Enjoy the rest of the service. Yotai 
，把这些东西拿去，不要将我付的店当做买卖的地方。”他的门徒就想起经上记着说：“我为你的店，心里焦急，如同火烧。”因此，犹太人问他。你既做这些事，还显什么神迹给我们看呢？耶稣回答说：“你们拆毁这殿，我三日内要再建起来。”犹太人便说：“这殿是四十六年才建成的，你三日内就再建起来吗？”但耶稣这话是以他的身体为殿，所以到他从死里复活以后。门徒就想起他说过这话，便信了圣经和耶稣所说的。Here was a spirit saying to the church, "Thanks be to God." I heard about this church minister. He was driving along a country road when a police officer pulls him over. "Have you been drinking?" he says. "Just water." Replied the minister. The officer says, "But then, why do I smell wine here?" After a long pause, the minister looked at the bottle and says, "Good Lord, you did it again." That wasn't me. The first miracle Jesus ever performed, according to John's Gospel, was to turn the water into wine at the wedding in Cana. That was the symbolic sign that tells everyone that Jesus' ministry has just begun. As if Jesus was telling people, "You should join this business of turning the water into wine." Right after that, the second sign in John's Gospel is that Jesus now cleanses the temple. Jesus and the followers enters the temple precinct. By that I mean they are now in the fenced area of the temple, about several football field size. They are not actually in the sanctuary yet. So out in this large plaza, there are sellers of animals and money changers. Why? Because other foreigners, Gentile people, came to worship there as well, and they were using different currencies. But then what happened between? The animal traders and the money changers—they became lucrative, and they started taking over the space of this large plaza, and even the area where the Gentiles were supposed to gather to worship. And right in the middle of this business, the priests were—they were just allowing this to happen. Jesus sees this commercial interest, and probably some other possible corrupt practices are encroaching on the area where worshippers were supposed to be. Then Jesus declares, quoting Isaiah chapter fifty, verse six, "My house shall be called the house of prayer. Stop making my father's house a marketplace." Jesus even goes further. He's quoting now Jeremiah chapter seven. Jeremiah chapter seven. No ruling priest, no religious leaders wants to hear anybody talking about Jeremiah chapter seven. That talks about corrupt, oppressive priesthood that was doomed. Jesus is now telling everyone: the money changer, the animal trader, and the priest. This message, you keep this up, and what happened to the first temple that was destroyed by the enemy will happen to you again. They don't like it. They they are very angry now, but they couldn't do anything about Jesus and what he does because people, the crowds, the Gentiles, they love it. If you study the Bible, especially、uh, the Gospel of Luke and John,、uh, you may find the main characters in these two books are not religious leaders. The main characters are not the people who have money. 
the main characters in these two books, John's and Luke's gospel, they are, they are the social outcast. Children, the evil possessed, the women, the sick, the sinners, the hungry, the poor, and the lost, they are the main characters. And we hear Jesus' voice again and again and again. Have mercy on them. In our lives, many times we get so focused on ourselves, we don't hear these main characters according to Jesus so often, don't we? But in truth, in reality, many people today, our Gentiles, this social outcast, the lost, hungry, we can see them quite often. And they, they have hurt and pain bottled up inside them. And the truth is, when people know they are heard, they are cared for, it makes what they are going through much easier. Jesus is telling us with this message, keep your heart of compassion open, open to the Gentiles, open to the outcast. Could it be God has put some people in our lives so that we can learn how to keep our compassion open? In my life, I've been learning how to keep my heart of compassion open with my family members. I've seen my pearls of patience and kindness being developed, putting up with my family. If every irritation can become a pearl, my family members help me to have a whole strand between me and my children. I can open up a jewelry store. Well, Brian, I expect I expected to hear more about how I get blessed today. You know what? How you get blessed is strangely so closely connected how you bless others. People today, instead of seeing that our increase is linked to others, they are so quick to judge and quick to find faults. They don't know how others are raised, what people are going through, and they, they just like the money changers, just like the animal tree, just like the priest, they, they want to take over their space. And sometimes people complain, all they know is he sure is unfriendly, she has some hang-ups, I'll never drive that car. I've never taken vacation in this economy. If I were them, I would not buy that house. And here's the key. We're not them. We don't really know what the Gentiles, so to speak, would do because we haven't walked in their shoes. Only two stories appear in all four Gospels. Only two stories commonly appear in four Gospels. The feeding of the 5,000 and the story of Jesus cleansing the temple. It tells us that these two stories may be very important. And in John's Gospel, only this story comes right at the beginning while the others located it at the end of Jesus' story, the story of cleansing the temple. This story is located right, at, right after the first sign of turning the water into wine. As if Jesus is inviting us to join his ministry. Turn the water into wine, now let's clean the temple. Let's clean the sanctuary. Let's clean the place where God resides. John puts it at the very beginning of, of gospel because John's understanding is that Jesus came to renew the Jewish faith, to bring forth passion and purity back into worship of God. Other people, money changers, animal traders, priests are taking the space where the worshipers are supposed to be. 
And Jesus said, Do not make my father's house a marketplace. Jesus was not opposed to tradition, the custom, or what they used to do, but he just overturned the tables because the very tradition that they were following was excluding the Gentiles who wanted to congregate, who wanted to worship. The ritual had become rituals of discrimination. And Jesus was telling them, keep your heart of compassion open to the Gentiles. I heard this story. Um, uh, this high school boy was going to have a blind date, but he was shy. And his friend said, hey, I've lined up, lined you up uh, with a great date for Saturday night. It's all set. Who is it? He asks. It turned out to be the friend's cousin, Doris. Oh no, he was anxious. I'm not going to be on a blind date. Hey, don't worry about this one. The friend said, Doris is a terrific girl, and trust me, she's a real looker, and I'll get you, I'll tell you how to get out of the date if you don't like the way she looks. This is what I do. I go to a girl's front door, and when she opens the door, I check her out. If I like what I see, then great, we are all set. But if she's ugly, I fake an asthma attack. I go, ah, holding my throat like you're having a trouble breathing, so you can even call off the date. No problem. So this teenager boy went to pick up Doris. He knocked on the door and she came to the front door. Really, Doris, to his surprise, was beautiful. She stood there not knowing exactly what to say. But then Doris took one look at him and went, Ah! During Jesus' ministry, he prepares the disciples for his passion. But they find the idea sometimes incomprehensible. The tradition, the custom. According to the tradition, the money changers, the animal trades, the priest, they were supposed to take over the space where the Gentiles were supposed to be. They find it difficult to see a vision that is different from the tradition. Why don't you leave the money changers there? Who are the Gentiles in our lives who want to congregate to pray and worship at the temple precincts, not even the sanctuary? I heard somebody say, people may not read the Bible. They may not sing a hymn in the sanctuary, but they... They know you, you and I, may be the only Bible they read. You and I may be the only song they will listen to. Let us keep our hearts of compassion open. Amen. Oh.
Offering prayer. As the Gentiles gathered to pray and worship at the temple, where Jesus drove out the money changers, we are gathered here at this space. As Jesus turned the marketplaces into a place of worship, may we too seek God and just focus on God without any agenda, just in God's company. We offer what we can offer. Accept our offerings, O oh God. Amen. Let us join our voices together in the prayers of the people. Who is this who enters the doors of our temple, who overturns the tables, strews silver and gold on the floor, frees the sacrificial doves from gilded cages? Listen, as they rise, the beating of their wings is a song of loud Hosanna. It is Jesus of Galilee, the Son of God, who comes to cleanse the great temple, to restore its subverted chambers to a house of hallowed prayer. Then let us open the doors of our hearts even wider so he can cast out the thieves who take what is sacred and tender and turn it hard as gold in a feast. May our church be a place where everyone can congregate and pray. May it be a garden where we all see and listen to Jesus. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Did they realize what he was talking about? Do we realize what he's talking about? Our Lord is here talking about his own death and the resurrection at the temple. O God, take what is corrupt and withered and let it break forth in beauty. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ our Lord, we are His new creation. 
As someone in our church says, we will get through this together. With God's help, we will get through this together. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.